Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Father Bill W. I'm an Episcopal priest. I live here in beautiful Austin, Texas. And uh, the purpose of these podcasts is, uh, um, well, I've, I've been in recovery uh, a little over 50 years now. And um, I'm, I'm a little troubled that oftentimes uh, recovery world, the recovery world can get kind of mechanical. And I think there's some real depth to this thing. And my hope for these uh, podcasts is, is, to, is to dig a little deeper, uh, go into the history, go into the psychology, go into the spirituality. And, and that's what we're doing, I think, uh, really well in this particular series is uh, we're trying to focus on what is the change that needs to happen in individuals for uh, treatment to be effective, recovery to happen, uh, what, what has to go on deep, deep inside? <clears throat> so uh, I'd encourage you to visit our website if you haven't done it already. It's titled Two-Way Prayer. While you're there, sign up to the newsletter, and that'll remind me that I need to get one out <laughs> by the end of this month, so I got to get working on that. And uh, But you will learn about a, a new form of prayer. Not not a new. It's it's the one that they did in the, in the early, early days of uh, AA, and it came from the Oxford group. And uh, it's listening to God, and it's a real life changer uh, for many, many people. It brings new life to their program. So uh, check it out if you haven't done so, and, and above all, start practicing it. Uh, that, that's the main thing. Uh, um, and I want to thank our donors. They keep the lights on. Really, really helpful. Go to uh, When you're at the, um, at the website, just hit that Donate button. And uh, also doing this thing, we're moving it over to YouTube. So we uh, uh, post our podcast now on YouTube, and it's under the title of Two-Way Prayer. So uh, check that out if you um, get a chance. Hey? All right, we are deep into our series now on recovery writing, and my guest um, is a friend of mine, Dr. James Ryan. He's coming to us from beautiful, sunny Alaska, and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, he's teaching up there, which is something that he's wanted to do for a long, long time. And I'm really convinced that, uh, you know, we talk about alcoholics and addicts as oh, they're just so, so full of potential. Well, reach your potential. You know, if, if that's what you want to be, uh, that's what James wanted to be. And after futzing around for a while, he just dug in and went for it. And so congratulations. That's... Uh, and that's really been an inspiration to me and to and to all of the folks who are listening. Um, so uh, his story is is that uh, he is in long term recovery. He's twelve stepper, uh, married, father of two. Got his PhD from the University of Wisconsin, and it was in the subject of uh, writing, recovery writing, and he did his dissertation uh, on that subject, and has now published a book titled Recovery Writing, Discovery and Healing in the 12 Steps. And before we begin, I, I do want to encourage our listeners to go back and check out the first two episodes because it's kind of difficult to come in in the middle of this, uh, this discussion. I, I, want to do, I want us to pick up with where we left off. First, welcome back. <laughs> Good to be here. <laughs> yeah, we're having fun with this one. I, mean, I, I really like that. So where we left off is you were you were just starting to do some research on the mm -hmm. benefits, uh, and you're looking at the benefits of recovery writing because you 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 saw that deeply, and um, and you saw that in the treatment world, it wasn't happening maybe as 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 well as you might have hoped. So just to refresh our listeners. Tell us what it was you hoped to learn by by doing the dissertation. Sure. Yeah. So there's a there's a couple of layers of things that I wanted to learn. On on paper, what I wanted to learn was stuff that was relevant to my PhD program. So I wanted to learn uh, the questions that I wrote into my proposal were things like, what kinds of writing do addicts do in recovery? Um, what is what do they say about their experience with this kind of writing? How, how do they talk about the ways that it works and the, and the kind of effect it has on them? 
And then what does that teach us about writing in general and writing mm -hmm. and healing? So that's sort of the academic layer of stuff I wanted to learn. Right. Underneath that was a more personal set of questions, which, like you said, really came out of my experience working in treatment and my experience in recovery myself. Writing was such a powerful experience for me. Yeah. I really saved my butt. And then I'm watching other people go through kind of the same thing, but the, you know, and some of them are getting well and having great experiences, but a lot of them are not. And so the big question for me was like, mm -hmm. well, what, what's going on? What's the dynamic there that says, you know, how come some people are getting a lot of help from this and other people are, uh, are not All right. That was a troubling, troubling question for me. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I think you said you came away with four um, yeah. major um, benefits That's right. of, of recovery writing. And those, uh, repeat those for us just quickly, and then we're going to uh, go deeply into the first one. Sure. Yeah. So um, one of the things you do when you do research like this is you, you got to interview a bunch of people and ideally like, people who are in traditions different from my own, right? So I wanted to interview people who were doing writing, kinds of writing that I had never done. Uh, but then when you get all that data back, you sort of have to look for themes and patterns and what is the underlying stuff here that connects these people's experiences. And you're right, that did sort of boil down into more or less four things that people kept telling me about why writing was important to them, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of what kind of writing they were doing. Okay. They said it helped them get honest, they said it helped them connect with the higher power. Uh, they said that it uh, transformed their relationships and that it was something they could use to help other people, help other addicts. Those are right. the kind of the four main, the main categories. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start with the honesty thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it really does kind of begin there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if recovery is going to happen, there's um, a falseness. That I think when, when somebody checks into treatment or comes into a a, a, a twelve step meeting, you know, yeah. it's it's I've been living a lie, and and I think I've been doing it at two different levels, and and I kind of want to probe probe this with you a little bit because one is at the level of the the relationship to the chemical or the addiction, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it might be, and then that's kind of fallen apart, hopefully, mm -hmm. but there's a deeper layer too that we bring to the table. And I don't know that everybody gets down to that one. Because if you just stay at the level of, uh, okay, well, I'm not drinking. Uh, you know? yeah. What is lying and deceitfulness and duplicity still going on in my life? Mm -hmm. You with mm -hmm. me? I'm absolutely with you, yeah. Addiction is so like plagued with dishonesty. And recovery is so interwoven with honesty that it's like the two are almost the same thing. In addiction, I have to lie all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just, right, yeah. I just have to lie all the time. And I have to lie to you because if you find out what I'm doing, then there's going to be consequences. Right. So I got to tell you lies. And uh, I also have to lie to myself because if I find out what I'm really doing, <laughs> That's right. And that, that's going to be another kind of problem. <laughs> that's right. That's right. right. So like you're saying, if somebody shows up in treatment, hopefully they've at least that first, that inner lie has started to unravel. Like, yeah. uh, I, mm, I guess I can't, I guess I'm not just having fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. If right. not, then the counselor, that's, that's his first job is to penetrate <laughs> that, that, that layer of lie. Right. Right. Uh, I may still be lying to everybody else in the world. Uh, but mm -hmm. hopefully there's some internal like breaking through of honesty. And you're right. There is a deeper layer to that. The underneath my lie about, you know, oh, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just having a good time. Underneath that is there's other things inside me and about me that I do not want to look at. Right. I don't want them to come up. I don't want them to come to the surface. I don't want to deal with them. And the, the substance or the behavior has been a way for me to, to keep that lie in place. Right. Um, so if I lose that, if I lose that substance, if I lose, then all of a sudden it makes me vulnerable to these other things that might emerge. 
mm -hmm. uh, these other truths that are uncomfortable and scary, right? Think, it, things that I've done, things that have happened, thing, all kinds of stuff, right? Things that I'm not even aware of. That's right. I mean, because I think what we're getting yeah. to here is there's, there's, a, there's a level of the unconscious mm -hmm. that has to change uh, because your concern, and it really came across strongly, you, you really care about people. You really cared about the the clients that you that you were working with, right. and and you underwent a change. And and why can't they undergo a change? Yeah, the book says somewhere what we admitted to our inmost self. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a clue. There, yeah. there, there's <laughs> there's an inmost self mm -hmm. that I'm not in touch with. Right. And writing has, has a way mm -hmm. of getting me connected to that inmost self. We yeah. call it the unconscious. Sure. But it's that, it's that level too yep. that you got to penetrate. That's right. Um, and I think that's what a lot of us, I think, I think that's a, it's, it's a scary thing. Yeah. Honesty, honesty is a scary thing kind of in every way. Uh, if you come into this program and you make a, a radical commitment to honesty, which is what's recommended, right? You come in and you say, no more lies, no more Barely BS. have we seen a person <laughs> fail. <laughs> Just, you're telling the truth now in every way that you possibly can. Right. And if you really do that, uh, your life is going to fall apart, right? Mm. It's going to come in like a wrecking ball and break all kinds of stuff because yeah. if you're anything like, like me, you have a life that's just sort of built like a house of cards, one lie stacked on top of the next. And the truth comes in and just demolishes that. Right. So, so all, everything's in, a, in, a, in, a, in disarray when you start telling the truth. Uh, Which is progress. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like hell. Hey, you're hurting in all the right departments. This yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not going to feel good. No, it's not, it it's not, and it's not going to be like unchaotic because it's like you might lose all kinds of relationships. You might lose job. You might lose all kinds of things. It might, might feel think like I'm going crazy. Yeah, you might feel like, yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. So I was better off before. Right. <laughs> At least yeah. I wasn't feeling. Now I'm right. feeling. Yeah, that's right. Not only not only does your life fall apart, but your internal life falls apart. Right, that's right. Because because exactly that reason. Now I have all this. All these emotions are coming up. The things I've been avoiding and putting off with the lies are now surfacing, and yeah. the consequences of what I've done are hitting yeah, me. I, and I don't know who I am. Yeah, I really right. don't know who I am because right. I've been living a lie. I've been fortifying it with the alcohol. You yeah. take that away, yeah. and I'm naked and lost. Yeah. Ooh, so that I think is Ooh. maybe the very beginning of that innermost self honesty you've been talking about. Yeah, is that I have this persona or this sort of guy that I present to the world. Right, and I kind of I uh, somewhere the big book says this too. I kind of know that that guy is BS. I know it's not real. Right, um, but I need him. <laughs> well, that's right. <clears throat> yeah, that's right, but, and 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 it's appropriate at times. Right, I mean, but it, it, yeah. I mean, I'm not the only one full of BS out there. The whole world is full of it. And to maneuver yeah. through it, yeah. uh, knowing a little BS is kind of helpful. <laughs> right. right. My BS monster, though, has grown to the size of... Well, like, that's you know. what happens, isn't it? <laughs> that little puppy gets to be a great Dane. <laughs> yeah. So when you start telling the truth and that guy breaks, right. and I can't use him anymore... Then it's then there's a period of like I don't know how to navigate the world. I don't know how to, who I am, how to be, how to talk to people. What kind, how do I do relationships? How do I have a marriage? How do I work? I don't. It all falls apart. So the things outside me are falling apart, and the things inside me are falling apart. And honesty is this horrible thing that I never should have done because <laughs> uh, it, it just comes and it breaks stuff, right? Right, right, yeah. It starts to build something new. Yes. Because it's small. if I, it's very small, right? Very but small in small. the in the rubble, <laughs> yeah, 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 of the it. lies, I have this one thing that I've been, you know I have honesty, and honesty starts to build 
relationships that are founded on telling the truth. Right. It feels different too. Yeah. It feels different. Yeah. There's, you're right. There's sort of a, a feeling in my, like in, even in my body that just right. like, this is a, this is a new thing. It's weird. Yeah. I'm breathing better. Yeah. There's yeah. Sure. All the work of holding the house of cards together. goes right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, so now in this, <laughs> in this state of confusion and chaos, yeah. You hand people paper and pen, huh? <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you're going to convince them that writing is going to help. <laughs> yeah. How so? How does how does writing help with with the going deeper into the honesty, getting peeling away the layers? Well, you talk about um, discovery. You talk about discovery. I that, think was the first one. That's right. That is an important discovery. one. I do want to make kind of a disclaimer before I talk about that. Okay. Um, you, really didn't that... Get, you really didn't get a PhD. Is, is that, is that <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't worked this honesty thing the way you should. Is, is that what you're going to tell us? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they say uh, that your bachelor's degree is your BS and your PhD is it's piled higher and deeper, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, your disclaimer, James? <laughs> Uh, so writing is not like a magic bullet. Um, it, 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 there's no property of writing that automatically helps you be more honest. Okay. Um, and we talked about that a little bit last time when I was noticing, you know, people are going through this program, they're doing all this writing and it's not, it's not doing the trick. Right. So you can, you can use writing to lie. You can write a letter to someone, for example, that's full of lies. Right. Mm -hmm. You can also use writing to lie to yourself. Right. You, you can do that. So I, I just want to say that's not like a magical property of writing, but writing does have some features to it that are really useful when your intention is to tell the truth, when your intention is to dive deep, then it has some aspects that are really helpful to us. Um, and those are the aspects that we're talking about, because when I interviewed people, I said, what kind of writing is helpful to you yeah. in your recovery? And they didn't say, oh, it helps me lie. <laughs> right. right, right. They right. said, they said, no, here's, here's the parts of writing that help me tell the truth. And it's right. moving from this l level of thinking, yeah. which is, uh, which is disordered, shall we mm -hmm. say. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's disordered in there. Yeah. And it's moving away from that to something new. Yes. That's, that's significant. So let's start with that, maybe. Um, hmm. That's the, the one thing that writing can do is it sort of gives a structure to our thoughts. That's important in, for, for folks like us, <laughs> especially starting out, but even today, when who are fairly disordered in our thinking, right? The way that writing does that is, I mean, it does it for all kinds of writing do this. Um, we call it uh, genre, which means that writing, anytime you write something, you're writing in a kind of a form or in a, in, in a, in a certain kind of writing. Mm -hmm. So if I'm writing something, I'm writing a letter or I'm writing a list or I'm writing a novel or I'm writing a poem or I'm writing a thank you note or et cetera, et cetera. Right. There's always a, a genre or a form that the writing is taking. Even if I'm just kind of free writing everything that's coming off the top of my head, that too is a kind of a genre. Right. Okay. Right? And, and, and there's, is there a shift? an internal shift that happens. Uh, that's what I'm wondering. See, see mm. if I'm writing a shopping mm -hmm. list, it's one thing. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm taking on a different form of writing, something happens inside. Yeah. Is that, that's what you're saying. Am, am I right? Am I following that, you? Yeah, I, that's, that is true. That like, um, when you take, when you take on the project of doing a particular kind of writing, I'm going to write a letter or I'm going to write a grocery shopping list. Um, the sort of blooming, buzzing confusion that's in our minds. Right. Now has a kind of a target. Yeah. And so the target of this noise and chaos is now make a list. Right. Okay. And the list has an order and a clarity to it. Mm -hmm. It has certain expectations. There's going to be one thing and then there's going to be the next thing. And then there's going to be the next thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Also of the letter. There's going to be a dear so-and-so, and there's going to be, why am I writing you? And here's the information. 
it sort of focuses uh, the mind on a particular structure of thought. I see. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it accesses different parts of my mind that mm -hmm. I may not be as aware of. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. I mean, yeah. because like, like I do two way prayer and, and I listen to a lot of two way prayers. Mm -hmm. And and it's like when you're when you're doing that, people get into some sort of a mode, some sort of an internal thing that allows yeah. something to come through, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, and it's different. Yeah. It's different. Right. But so it's, that, in there. it's already yeah. in there. It's already in there is what I'm right. thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great reality is within. Yeah. Now we're now we're moving into the discussion of discovery, which discovery, is yeah. the, you know, in it's sort of the discovery is sort of in my um if you're a PhD like me and you're having these conversations, they say discovery is how you, how writers um essentially come up with what the idea for what they're gonna write. So it's that part of the process. Right. Um, but the way I talk about it is very much more about what you just said, which is something emerges yeah. right, that was unexpected, uh, that, that we weren't aware of before we started. We started writing and something new came out of it, an, an inner truth of some kind or an insight that we, 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 we didn't have before we began. And when people said that, you know, this helps them get honest because there's a discovery aspect, that's that's the kind of discovery, not just I came up with an idea, but that something emerged yeah. in, in the mix between in the interaction between me and the thing that I'm trying to, to write, something new came out. And is the source the unconscious? I think that's a good way to talk about it. So yeah. the way I'd talk about it, so the way Jung yeah. would talk about it, right? That, you know, that if, we, if we're if we're 10 percent uh, uh, conscious and 90% unconscious, whatever the old iceberg yeah. you know, analogy is, that's where it's, it lies. And, and, and addiction mm -hmm. lies down there too. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I think you th have to kind of say that it's the unconscious or something like that, because yeah, yeah. by definition, it's something that I was not conscious of right. when I started writing. Right? <laughs> yeah. And when, when the old writers would talk about a muse, Mm -hmm. is, isn't that the kind of thing that, that we, we're discussing here? That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. that there's a, the, the ideas or the, the, the substance that I'm looking for, the, the, the material that I'm going to work with in this writing, the final form of it is something that's undiscovered. It's not all up here already in the brain. And so it has to come from somewhere else, somewhere outside of the ego. And whether that's a spirit like a muse or some internal motion like the unconscious or something else, right? Um, yes. People talk about channeling literature or right. stuff like that. Like it's coming from somewhere else. And that's, Wilson Wilson yeah. talked about that when he when he was writing the twelve steps. Right. He kind of approached it in the old Oxford group style that he was he was a member of, and yeah. picked up paper and pen and began writing. But yeah. it was like something took over inside yeah. of him and right. wrote them so so we say there's an inspiration an mm -hmm. intuition that's good well that's all unconscious stuff yeah yeah and it's the kind of thing that the people i talk to i've experienced that in writing inventory yeah um, it's the kind of thing that came up again and again in interviews in different ways people would talk almost as i had one person say you know my hand moved across the page and i did not know what it was saying yeah until I read it later. Right. That's and when right. I did, I was shocked mm -hmm. by the, the, the degree of truth that it contained about me. Right. Perfect. Yes. You've got several elements listed here and they're all important. Yeah. But before we leave discovery, I, I want to stay focused on treatment and recovery. Because uh -huh. if there's an, if I'm approaching my treatment, <laughs> My, and my recovery. I'm 50 years, you know, but I'm still discovering things. Mm -hmm. That's that's part of it. Right. If I've found it, boy, is it going to get old and stale. Right. But if I have found a way to stay fresh mm -hmm. by discovering deeper and deeper depths of myself, right. you know, then yeah. It's a it's an engaging journey, right? And that's what young people are looking for. 
don't give me your old, you know, stale AA jargon. Yeah. Yeah. Teach me how to go inside Mm -hmm. and discover what's in there, the beautiful parts that are in there. Yeah. I think that's, that's what this thing's about. It's a, yeah, you're touching on how this is, there's sort of an end. The source that we tap into um, doesn't have an end right. of the things that it wants to tell us. <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. There's also that's no right. end to my ego getting into BS. <laughs> that's right, too. <laughs> <laughs> so the interaction between those two things is an endless supply of like things to see. Right? This is life, baby. <laughs> this is, but, but you're nailing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You're nailing it. Good. Yeah. And a lot long term into recovery, I can get I can get my head into into all kinds of nonsense and I'll, and I need something to crack that shell and put me back into into connection again. Writing leaves a physical record, you say. Uh, That's right. How does this relate to honesty? Well, in in a couple of ways. Um one is that it, it gets by producing a physical record. I get something outside of my body. Mm-hmm. So we we just been talking about discovering in a way that's like we see things that we hadn't we didn't know before, right? right. Um, sometimes though we already know a thing or we kind of know a thing, but we just do not want to say it. It's not safe to say this thing to any other human being, right? We'll be judged. We'll be or me or me or, or me. Myself, I don't want to right? say to me. Right. That's right. right. But. If I can put it on the page, even if I don't tell anybody about it, <laughs> right. there's already a, like, a, like a, a step towards honesty or a kind of honesty that's happening there, a self-honesty, mm-hmm. where it put it outside my body, right? I might even write it in a secret code that nobody could decipher, I've but done it, that. It's, it's out here in the world, right. right? That's right. It's not in my head anymore. I was able to express it. And sometimes... I mean, that can, that can be scary because it's out there now, mm-hmm. but it can also sometimes come as a tremendous relief, right? Um, the thing that I was holding back so tightly and putting all this energy into suppressing or oppressing is now out there, right? Right. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a motion of honesty, of telling the thing, of getting it out mm-hmm. there. Right? Mm-hmm. Now that it's out there on the page, uh, it's been expressed, it also allows me to reflect on it. Uh-huh. If it's all up here, we were talking about sort of chaotic buzzing, thinking everything's going crazy. Right, right. It's very hard to like capture one thought and like think in detail about it or get any kind of insight. I, I'm spending Mo- more time. Monkey repressing. mind. Monkey yeah. mind. Yeah. I'm spending That's... more time repressing and avoiding and moving right. on than I am about meditating on the uncomfortable stuff. Right. But when it's on the page, I can just look at it. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that allows me to see new things about it. Mm-hmm. Not only that it's true about me. Wow, I, I said that. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. but maybe there's uh, more truth connected to that that now starts to come forward. So that's an, the, getting it out there helps more things come out. And the more free, I, free I am. Yeah. In in moving from head to pen. Yep the better uh, is going to be the result. I mean, if, if it's analytical mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and structured, yeah. it's, it's almost doomed. It's mm. just taking this and in the head and yeah. putting it onto the paper. But sure. This is a little different. Yeah. If I have an element of discovery to it, yeah. then the ego is kind of stepping to one side. Right. And allowing something else to come forward. Right. I do think that that, this is getting kind of circling around a little bit, but. That's what we do here, James. Yeah. I've noticed yeah. that with you. <laughs> that, um, I want to say there's degrees of that discovery that's always happening in every act of writing. That's right. Yeah, when I'm remember. writing a grocery list and I can't remember what I need at the store. Yeah, the then there's sort of the, yeah. there's this moment of like, uh, right. and then suddenly I remember, whoop, something comes to mind. Ah, oh, toothpaste. Oh yeah, right. you know mayonnaise, whatever it is. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I need these things, and then they come into the store, and it's like, from nowhere almost, ideas emerge and they appear to mind and they show up on my list. That's obviously not like groundbreaking stuff. We do it all the time. Right. Um, it doesn't 
It does kind of change my life, but in a very minimal way. It just sort of says, well, now you can go buy the things you need. But it does make a change. Uh, it's also such a small change that my ego is immediately able to reappropriate it. I can immediately say, like, I didn't know the answer, but they popped up. Oh, yeah, I thought of that. Right? Ain't I smart? Or look at me. <laughs> <laughs> look right. at me, Mommy. Look what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it goes pretty deep. <laughs> and that can be true for more complex forms of writing too. Like if you write your dissertation, it came from somewhere, but you know, I'm, you can t also, the ego can take full credit for that. Oh, I'm such a smart yeah, guy. Or I can be grateful. I, it's, right. it, it's really different. It's really different. <laughs> I can be grateful yeah. that it came through in spite of me. Right. Right. And I think that is speaks more honestly about the experience of these things. When it comes to recovery writing, I think that the experience of discovery is one that's so kind of, it can be at least so shattering, right? And so heavy. And so the, the stakes are so high and the changes are so big that it's really hard for the ego to reach in right away and say, I did that, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you're sitting in two-way prayer, for example, and you get a kind of insight that um, totally knocks your socks off, right? It's hard for you to say, oh, yeah, that was me. That's I'm right. so insightful. Right? Yeah. And that's so right. that's where discovery becomes a new kind of honesty, a deeper kind of honesty, but also uh, a way of, of connection to something bigger. I, 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 I have found the door. Mm -hmm. and, and the ego has a role in this. The, e the ego must open the door mm -hmm. and it must sit by the door. Yeah. But it must allow what is behind the door to step forward. Yep. That's discovery. That's right. And it has to listen and move the pen. That's right. Or it's sometimes just... it doesn't even move the pen. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> sometimes it just reads what happened afterward, right? Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But it does have a function. It does have a role. Very important. Yes, absolutely. We still have to be... A human being after after it's all said and done. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> but we do need that. So 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 you're right. So um, if I put something on the page, and it's just the things I already know, yeah. um, then I maybe if it if it's heavy stuff, I'm not telling anybody. I'm still expressing something that's still honesty. And that's good. That's a good. Yeah, thing. That's, a that's a good thing. thing. Right. But we really want to keep moving into these other layers of the things that I don't know that show right. up on the page. Right. Columns seven and eight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, but the physical record is still valuable of that okay. um, in a couple other ways. One is that um, it helps me. There's memory function to writing. The weakest ink is better than the strongest memory or something there we go. like that. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to get it down on paper, <laughs> yeah. or, it'll, or it'll go away. It'll go away. It does, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So if I do want to tell people stuff about myself, yeah. if I do want to get honest at that level, you know, I can, I can, I can step in the shower and and have this idea emerge that's like, oh, dude, you need to apologize to your wife. <laughs> you were a jerk, right. and by the time I'm dressed, I can have completely have forgotten about it. She's a jerk. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We flip it back. <laughs> if I don't capture that somewhere, then I might not even remember the insight at all. So having it on the page um, is like, now I can carry it around with me. And it kind of holds me accountable to the insight in the way that if I don't write it down, it could, it could just kind of let out of my brain. What do you recommend people do with their uh, fourth steps? Oh, you know, I, I, I've heard a lot of people do a lot of different things, and I don't have a prescription for it. Okay, no, well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah, but some people hang on to them for a long time, and they look back at it. Yeah, that can Other be dangerous, people. though, can it? Uh, I mean, it you can. don't want anyone to find it, right? You know, well, that's right. That's right. Unless you did it in code, and you got a damn good code. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That's right. Uh, it's not for anybody else's eyes. So mm -hmm. you don't want that to happen. So it needs to be secure. So there is some value though. Sometimes you, you, you know, if you really are changed by this stuff, sometimes you even forget what your resentments you had. And right. if you want an example, it, it sometimes it's nice to go back and look, but also, you know, other people just burn them. Yeah. yeah I was encouraged to do that. Right. And, and I kind of approached the same thing with two way prayer. 
had, yeah. I had I had a stack of journals. I had a stack of journals in my in my uh, closet, you know, going going yeah. back years, and it's like I could just imagine, you know, it's some I'm dead, and it's Thanksgiving, and the kids are going through my journals. You oh know? no! Yeah. Hey, Patrick, look what he said about you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Burn them, burn them. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Well, oh, and that's man. also kind of in a weird way. That's also another value of having a physical object is that there's value in destroying it yeah uh or there's value in putting it somewhere right, right. um there so when you burn the thing there's a kind of a very tangible oh, ceremony. Active, it's ceremony. yeah and you're letting it go letting it go right up up to, up to in the, the sky. way and in the, the way sky gods it goes irrevocable. to the sky gods right. you can't take that back because it's burnt <laughs> right that's right can't rewind that. One of the most uh, interesting stories about this that came out of the research was a lady who told me that she had a thing called a God box. Mm -hmm. And this was like, a, I don't know, a large crate <laughs> that she had underneath her bed. And it's a God box on it. This wasn't a mm -hmm. metaphor. It was a literal box. Right. And uh, she, when she was stirred up about something or trying to control mm -hmm. her life in some way, she would, she would write it all out, you know, all the feelings and all the things that were going on. And she would say, okay, God, here you go. And physically put it into the God box and close the lid, push it back under the bed. And that was it. Mm -hmm. That stuff is in the God box. Now it's not for me anymore. Right. So it's this physical, like we can mentally say, oh yeah, I'm surrendering this thing. Da, da, da. Well, you know, one of the things the modern age has lost contact with ceremony and mm -hmm. ritual. Mm -hmm. And in large part, those were the functions mm -hmm. that it, 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 it helped us with, mm -hmm. you know, rolling yeah. in ashes. Well, what mm -hmm. the hell? Yeah, but, you know, I've, I've done it <laughs> <laughs> physically. Yeah. I mean, it's weird. Mm -mm. But but man, it's powerful. Right. You embody it can this. be powerful. Yeah. yeah. Right. So so and that's one way that writing interacts with this stuff. It allows a kind of ritual or a kind of expression that's like yes. the physical thing now needs to be burnt or it needs to be put in the God box or it needs to go away or whatever right. it is. Right? Yeah. Or published if you're an egotist. <laughs> <laughs> Because right. the world was waiting for this, you know. Yeah, like, here it is. <laughs> Divinely inspired. Divinely inspired. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Uh, writing allows us to try out or maybe try on a different language. Sure. Freedom again. Yeah. So this is a this is one that was a little bit this is sort of pointing toward the function of like when we write things, we can also revise the thing that we write. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen a lot in recovery writing. Mostly it's sort of expressive and discovery is really important. But occasionally I heard stories from people about, you know, I wrote a thing and then I looked at it and then it was time to, that allowed me to rethink it and revise my thoughts and ideas about it. To some extent, that's like what inventory is doing. It's taking that resentment, kind of walking you through the process of like, revisiting that resentment, revising your internal state around that resentment. But I've also heard stories like one was a sponsor would assign his sponsees in their first step, you know, tell me is the story of your addiction. Okay. And they would come back with that story and he would kind of poke at him and say, well, what about this? And what about that? What about? And so then they'd have to go back and revise. Because often our first draft of stories are like that are everybody's a jerk except for me. <laughs> and that's why, that's why I get high. Right. And so he would sort of push back on that gently and say, well, I'll go revisit that until they came with a, with a story that was a more honest. That was true. Again, uh, one of my, one of the people I talked to had a, a thing they did with their sponsees when they noticed that someone was about to make an amends and they were still kind of stirred up and angry about something, or it seemed like it was going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. He would say, well, why don't you write him a letter and then come read it to me? Or go write down what you want to say to them and then come read it to me. Um, and, and, you know, the first drafts of those things were often always like, not great. <laughs> it's like, I'm really sorry that you're such a jerk. 
that kind of a right. like if the amends is going in that direction, it's not going to be an amends, right? It's going to be a disaster. Exactly. Yeah. So that be, provides this opportunity of like, okay, you've tried that language on. Now let's let's try a different way, right? And and it might go through a number of iterations until we get to something that's more true, right? Um, and is more productive and healing for that relationship. Mm -hmm. Jung had this thing called active imagination. Yeah. Where he encouraged patients to dialogue with in writing mm -hmm. uh, with internal characters, mm -hmm. dream characters who come up. Right. Or, or angry characters, or, or childhood memories or such. Mm -hmm. Write to them, dialogue with them, go back and forth with them, duke yeah. it out with them, allow them to express themselves. They've come to you for a reason. Don't dismiss them, engage with them. Yeah. Talk about discovery. Oh, it's such a powerful, powerful method for that, yeah. right? Um, it's sort of taking some kind of internal thing inside you that you don't even have language or name for yet. Exactly. And you're, you're kind of saying, personifying it in a way or right. allowing it to have its character. That's right. And then the, in the dialogue, it's just like this constant revelation of the perspective of that thing. That's right. right? In ways that, 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 that are always kind of shocking. I mm -hmm. think, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, and allow allow it to be as shocking as it as it wants to be. Right. You right. know, I think right. you can. I mean, to get a little Freudian here, you're getting mm -hmm. in touch with the id, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and the super ego is saying, "Wait a minute, let's put a lid on this puppy." <laughs> yeah. No, and the ego is kind of stuck in the middle. I mean, that's that's basic Freudian uh geography you know yeah. didn't really oh, yeah. drive the ego he just said it's it's that consciousness that's stuck between these two forces yeah gotta be a good little boy really want to have sex so right <laughs> <laughs> well uh, you know and you gotta work it out you gotta work it out or you go to prison you know? right <laughs> right uh but on the page or you write it or you write it james right Right. There on the go. page, on the page, we on can sidestep all of that stuff. That's right. Keep it on the page. Or we can at least, it's it's a safe place to do anything that you could never do in real life. Right? That's right. And shouldn't yeah. in some Right. Ways. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is why we have all kinds of interesting novels and, and movies or whatever that are about um, things that no one should really probably ever do. Right. But secretly we want to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Right. That's so right. That's there's right. kind of um, hmm, in game, and this is a little weird, but in, in game theory, there's this thing called the magic circle. And when you when you start to play a game, you step inside this magic circle where you can, the rules are different here than they are in the real world. You know, I can bluff and lie and sneaky do things here that I can't do in the real world right. while we're inside the game. Yeah. And there's also kind of a magic circle around writing where you got it. That we can set aside that super ego and right. we can just say, all right, we're going to, all the weird ideas that we have. Come on, baby. Come impulses, on, baby. <laughs> that's right. Bring them up. And I do think that giving those things names and characters allows us to still keep a distinction between our egos and that thing that's emerging. You, that's, that's, that's exactly it. Right. It's exactly. So I'm not denying it. Because yeah. if I'm denying it, it's like pushing a, a beach ball under the water. Right. It's going to pop up. Right. But if I allow it to come up, tell me more. Tell me right. more. Right. You know, I'm really pissed. Tell yeah. me more. Mm. And then it all starts to pour out. Right. Right. You know? Yeah, absolutely. This is a distinction between like having intrusive thoughts and having a dialogue with something. Mm -hmm. If I'm having intrusive thoughts, it, the experience is like I'm being invaded by something that's uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. also there's this worry of like, I am that thing. Right. I am this horrible, this, a person who thinks horrible things, right? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I, I am that, James. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've owned it. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's it's called my shadow. That's right, right? But when I put a personality on we it, We stop I can fighting say, everything and everyone, including our shadows. Right, that's true. That's true. We allowed it to come up. We owned it. But first, first, not as a direct identification, that's but right. as, a, as a character first. That's right. Right. So yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. to be the intrusive thing right away. No, I can no, talk no. to the intrusive thing. And it's the intrusive thing that has to change. Right. In other words, and this is a basic Jungian thing, that, that the shadow has a gift. These mm -hmm. shadow things that come, you know, there's a gift attached to them. Mm -hmm. My job is to extract the gift. Right. Find it. Right. You know, uh, I'm a control freak. All right. <laughs> yeah. It comes as a shock, I know, but I am. <laughs> and uh, that can get me in a lot of trouble. Or I can be aware of it. And the gift is that I can get a lot of things done. Mm -hmm. That, 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 uh, okay, unconscious, but you have to behave. Yeah. You know, I want your energy, but, I, but I'm not going to give you the keys to the car. Right. I'm not going to allow you to drive over people. Mm -hmm. But I want to know what's going on inside. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I write about. Yeah. And it's tremendously helpful. There's a shift in the relationship there. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. And in a way, you're, you're the way what I'm hearing from you is there's a way in which you sort of identify with that thing. Absolutely. But, it's but a also, part of me. But also, I'm not more totally. than that, too. I'm yeah. More than that. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And to, let's take the inner addict. I think I got in touch with this, uh, God, almost, I don't know, 45 years ago or, or more. I started doing two way chair work with people. Oh, wow. Well. You know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and I bring an addict up there. Okay, I want you to talk to your addiction. So two-way chair, let's just be clear. That's, that's, there's an empty chair. That's right. I'm sitting in a different chair and I'm going to imagine. My bottle, my, I imagine that my bottle or my syringe there we go. is yeah. sitting in the other chair. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I begin to talk to it mm -hmm. and, and tell it what it's done to me and how terrible it's been and, I'm, yeah. I'm putting you down and it's just time for you to go away. Yeah. You know, be good and go. Right. And then I have them switch chairs mm. and then they become mm -hmm. the bottle. Right. Or they become the syringe. Now talk to this jerk who just told right. you to go away. What right. do you say to him? And you watch them. You watch them take on the character of mm -hmm. that bottle, of that addiction, because they know that character. Right. And that character talks to them and says, bullshit. Right. I ain't going away, buddy. <laughs> I'll be here when nobody else is here for you. Mm -hmm. You've tried quitting me before. Yeah. You know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's real. Right. So whether you're doing that in a chair or you're writing it down, you're allowing that part of you that does live in the unconscious mm -hmm. to become conscious. Yeah. And, 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 and then I'd go back and forth with them, you know? And by the end, they really got to see the power of that thing. Yeah. So, I mean, that's interesting because it's also, it's the same kind of dynamic, but it's not in writing, right? That's right. That's right. But you can do it in writing. You can do it in writing as well, right? That's, that's, and that's what I do. I don't, I, don't have, uh, I don't do empty chairs anymore, literally, but I yeah. do it in writing. Is there a reason why, do you think that, what do you think the difference is, if any, between... I'm going to ask you a question now. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> the researcher hat come, came back on. Yeah. Uh, uh, the empty chair one is really powerful because you're embodying it. Exactly. It's more powerful, probably. It's more okay. powerful. Anytime more you can embody, yeah. I think yeah. it's more powerful. So then is there any advantage to doing it in writing instead? Uh, I want to keep my marriage. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and if my wife sees me out on the back porch moving from chair to chair, she said, oh, I knew this was a mistake. <laughs> you just need a private chair room. Is all I you do need, need a private. I do have two chairs. I'll show you. The dog is in one right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and, 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 and that can be done in front of a group. And, and it has mm. a powerful impact on people. Sure. Too. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, yeah. I think anytime I can embody, as you say, yeah. the, the reaction that's going on, right. the more impactful it is likely to be. Sure. Yeah. And I agree with that. Yeah. Um, I but, guess but then I'm not going to get a written record. There it is. Yeah. Right. You know, and I, and I, I think the record part is important too because I like it, I go over that. Right. Okay. So, so that so that okay, and that gets into where the value of the writing, I think, the That's physical right. object, the way that it enables us to review, yeah, the the way that it enables us to have evidence. Right. Right. If I if I'm sitting on the back porch doing that, people are going to look at me like I'm crazy, and I might right. later think, oh, I was just acting crazy. Right. That's right. I, I, might, I might dismiss it. But if I have the paper and I say, oh, no, look, that that was really good and true and insightful. I can remind myself, no, this evidence is, this is real. Right. Mm -hmm. To me, it was the first evidence of that higher power was a real thing, that God, that God might actually be active because I, I, had, I didn't have an answer. I couldn't come up with an answer. And then, boom, I prayed for it and it came through and I, it was right there on the page. It was physical evidence now that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't deny that that had happened, right? And I think that is the second element of mm -hmm. the benefits that you list yeah. of recovery writing, that, that relationship with the higher power. Right. And right. Uh, we, we have kind of elected to hold that one off till next week mm -hmm. uh, because it's, a, it's an extremely important one. Right. And it's an extremely beneficial one yeah. that only writing is is gonna is gonna help facilitate. Yeah. So um, yeah. that's good. That's good. I, I you have given me courage to hit the back porch, and I'm I'm going to do some empty chair. So <laughs> I'm, I'm up before my wife gets up, and uh, <laughs> it'll confuse the hell out of the dog who's out there yeah. watching me. But that's okay too. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well okay well this was helpful anything else on the writing thing before we uh we uh, wrap it up i mean there's there's always more to say but there's i think i think more. we've done a pretty good job of covering the the touchstones of how it helps people get i guess there's one last thing that i would say okay. about go ahead yeah the physical addict, you always have one more uh, that's right. one more yeah. <laughs> uh which is that if you have the physical record uh, you can then tell, you can then go and say the thing in a way that you wouldn't be able to otherwise. So when I do my fourth step and I have an honest thing on the page, it's really the true truth. Um, and then I go to do my fifth step and I have exactly what the truth is on the page. When I tell you a story about myself, there's a lot of pressure and temptation for me to tell the story just a little bit. A step to the left of the just, just you know, to make it a better story and to make it more entertaining, <laughs> but also to to make sure that you understand my how I'm the good person. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Oh. Uh, and I might just massage the facts to so that you're by the end of me telling the story, you're like, well, that's totally understandable, James. I understand why. You did it. So the truth is on the paper. Yeah, and I come back after the talk. Yeah. And, and I look at the paper and I yeah. say, you lied again. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But if I take the paper with me, okay, then I, I, there's a couple of things that can happen there. Some people, when they do their fifth step, they read exactly what's on the page. Okay. Uh, and so that enables like the, the thing that's that fine. you saw, it, it's the fidelity is there, right? Yeah. Yeah. You said, yeah. You said the truth thing. Other people have a kind of a conversation where the paper is there to refer back to. Tell me what you right. learned in your inventory, right? And so you're gonna talk about that. And then if you, if you notice yourself massaging the truth, you can go back and say, oh no, look here, here it is, yeah. right? So th I guess that would be the final point about the value of putting it down on the pages for honesty, specifically for honesty, right? Right, and then, and then uh, to move it from the pages into my life. Yep. However, right. however you're gonna do that. Yeah, that's the that's the that's, thing. that's the important thing. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Well, uh, this was good. This is good, James. Yeah, enjoying it. Are you being honest up there in Alaska? I'm doing my best. <laughs> All right. All right, James. <laughs>
<laughs> Very good. I'll ask your wife. I'll ask your wife how you doing. Yeah, that's that's right. always much much better. Or or the kids, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, thank you, thank you once again. Uh, we have a lot of fun, uh, and this this is this is what recovery is about. So, yeah. thank you, James. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. Hope uh, hope you're able to get some stuff out of this. Pick up the pen, uh, start writing, start getting more honest, uh, you know, and um, and enjoy the hell out of your recovery, uh-huh. because this thing is more about discovery and uncovering. Than it is about you know just trotting the miserable road of miserable destiny. You know, mm. it's a, mm. make it a joy, make it a joy. Thank you, James. See you next time. God Thanks, bless bud. you, folks. Keep coming back. Mm-hmm.